Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is a Stew's News special report. In this episode, we'll talk about the newly awarded 2023 Federal State Partnership for Inner City Passenger Rail Program grants for the Northeast Corridor. The awards total $9 billion. We'll go over them one by one as described in the Federal Railroad Administration summary. First up, the Connecticut River Bridge near Old Lyme, Connecticut. This is a 116-year-old movable bridge that will be replaced by a similar bridge at a total expense of $1.24 billion. The main aim is to increase reliability. However, speed through the bridge area should also increase from 45 to 70 miles per hour. Up next, still in Connecticut, the Saugatuck River Bridge just east of the Westport Station. The ultimate aim is to replace this 118-year-old movable bridge by 2033. Estimated total cost is $580 million. The 2023 grant will pay for project development, including environmental review prep. A new bridge could double top speed here from 45 to 90 miles per hour. Get used to a Connecticut theme in this video, by the way. Moving on to the Devon River Bridge over the Housatonic River between Bridgeport and Milford. This $245 million grant will cover most of the development and final design cost of a replacement bridge. Total project cost is $3 billion, which sounds really high for what you get. I guess we'll see what's so special about the new bridge at the end of the decade. Completion expected in 2036. Speed upgrade is from 40 to 70 miles per hour. Since it's crumbling and it will take nearly 15 years to replace, the Devon Bridge will also undergo $150 million in repairs thanks to an additional $120 million in FSP NEC grants. Another one. Still on Connecticut bridges, this time in Norwalk, Connecticut over the Norwalk River. We talked about this one before in May. It is the four-tracked dual-lift walk bridge replacement. A $465 million grant, this time for construction of this projected $1 billion bridge. Expected to be complete in 2030, increasing speed on this very slow segment of the NEC from 30 to 45 miles per hour. The main benefit here is getting rid of the existing unreliable 127-year-old swing bridge. We'll come back to Connecticut, but first, let's spend a little time in Maryland. Baltimore, that is. Future home of the Frederick Douglass Tunnel. This 10-year project proposes to replace the decrepit 150-year-old B&P tunnel in this configuration. Improvements will include better throughput in the Baltimore area and an increase of top speed within the tunnel from 30 to 110 miles per hour. This is one of the few NEC projects currently on the table that could decrease scheduled travel times. This two-mile tunnel is expected to cut about two and a half minutes from the trip between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Speaking of Baltimore, the Baltimore Penn Station Master Plan received a grant of $110 million, adding to the $250 million project intended to bring the historic station into the 21st century. More Maryland and more bridges, this time the Bush River Bridge near Edgewood. This $19 million grant is for preliminary work to replace the existing double-tracked one-half-mile movable bridge with a four-track fixed span capable of supporting speeds over 125 miles per hour. Set for completion around 2036 at $744 million projected out the door. It seems like a relative bargain compared to that $3 billion Devon Bridge. A similar project is commencing five miles away on the west side of Devon, Maryland, the Gunpowder River Bridge. Slightly larger award for a bridge around a mile long, same stage in the project, same objective, same timeline. Total cost about twice as much as the Bush River Bridge at $1.3 billion for about twice the bridge. If you're looking for an idea of how those two crossings might end up, look no further than the Susquehanna River Bridges, about 20 miles up the right-of-way at Havre de Grace. A $2.7 billion project to replace the current two-track bridge with two bridges for a total of four tracks, carrying trains as fast as 160 miles per hour. 
This project is further along, ready for final design. This $520 million grant combined with others will cover that and construction, which is expected to complete in 2036. When combined with the other two bridges, this could provide a 25 mile full speed section in Maryland from Perryville to just east of Baltimore, saving about five minutes over current. Now let's move further up the coast to New Jersey and several projects that are part of the Gateway program, starting with the Dock Bridge Rehabilitation. A $300 million grant to rehabilitate a 90-year-old six-track bridge. If we're spending this kind of money, why not just replace it with a newer, better one? This bridge is adjacent to Newark Penn Station, which received a $59 million grant to upgrade, rehab, or replace its escalators and elevators. Hopefully they're not 90 years old as well. Right next door is the Sawtooth Bridge Replacement Program. This is an area where four rights of way converge. This $133 million grant is for preliminary construction, which is supposed to accelerate the complete replacement of these flyover structures by two years. The prelim work should increase reliability and speed from 60 to 90 miles per hour. Still in the same area, we'll next look at the Hudson Tunnel Project. This $16 billion project aims to rehab the existing North River Tunnel and construct a new tunnel between New Jersey and New York City. Yes, you heard that right, $17 billion for three miles of new tunnel. That's more than the official cost estimate for the entire planned high-speed rail line between Charlotte, North Carolina and Atlanta, Georgia, I talked about in this city pair video. Before leaving New Jersey, let's hop on over to New Brunswick. This $180 million grant goes toward a new facility and associated track meant to inspect and store trains and train cars, helping to ease congestion on the NEC main line through Trenton to the south. Now on to New York and the other side of Manhattan with the East River Tunnel Rehab. This nearly $1.3 billion grant covers most of the cost of fully repairing damage from the post-tropical storm named Sandy in 2012. And yes, you heard that right. It's going to take 15 years to repair storm damage to critical infrastructure. Going from Manhattan and Queens to the Bronx, we next have the Pelham Bay Bridge Project. This is a $58 million grant for final design work on a replacement for the current 115-year-old movable bridge. The new structure will unfortunately not be fixed span, but a slightly higher deck will allow it to open for watercraft 70% less. This will also support an increase of speed from 45 to 70 miles per hour. Looking at the area between New Haven, Connecticut and Providence, Rhode Island is costing $5 million. Some more Connecticut improvements while we're here. About six miles of double tracking for the Hartford line between New Haven and Springfield, Massachusetts. The goal here is to eliminate all of the single track sections on this line. The New Haven line from New York City to New Haven, Connecticut is receiving three additional grants, totaling about $210 million, looking to bring that line up to a modern standard in various respects. This is expected to boost top speeds in many areas from 70 to 90 miles per hour. This will also bring the track up to class six, which is rated for 110 miles per hour. So read into that what you will. Moving back to the southern portion of the NEC, let's make a quick stop at Penn Station in New York City. The Penn Station Access Project got about $1.6 billion total. The objective here is to give MTA North direct access to Penn Station over the Hellgate line through Queens and the Bronx with four new stations in the Bronx. The benefit to inner city rail is rehab of the Hellgate line and better connectivity to local transit for Penn Station. Looking at the southern section of the NEC more broadly, another planning grant, this time $21 million to improve speeds between New York City and Washington, D.C. We already have a decent idea of what this might entail thanks to studies done by the NEC Commission several years ago that investigated alternatives of varying cost and scope. 
Those range from a no-build alternative to a $300 billion option that would build a new, higher-speed second spine cutting more than two hours off a DC to Boston trip. And lastly, we head to Pennsylvania, just northeast of Philadelphia. The Cornwells Heights Station reconstruction project will receive a grant of $30 million. This will bring the station into ADA compliance, among other improvements. And that will do it for the 2023 Federal State Partnership for Inner City Passenger Rail Program NEC grants. If you have any opinions about this presentation or just inner city passenger rail in general, please share them in the comments. Next up will likely be another video like this for the FSP National Grants, which cover the rest of the country and should be announced soon. Expect a lot of Stu's news in the future, including the monthly report on Friday, December 1st. More Federal Railroad Administration high-speed rail videos are on their way, and of course, more high-speed rail city pair videos as well. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.